Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up an account with Digo. The first thing you do is go to Digo.com. Click on Get Started Now and sign in. Okay, now you need to go to your email and verify that you got it to activate. Okay, so I've gone ahead and activated it. And hit refresh. Okay, and once you've activated your email, you'll be prompted to drag this button onto your toolbars. So they encourage you to drag this, what they call a deolet, up to your toolbar, just like that. Or you can install their toolbar as well. So I'm going to go back to home. And once you've established your account, you'll notice over here, if you're an educator, you can click here and you can upgrade your account. So if you're a teacher, you click here, and you would fill out this information. Right now, because Sally Sue does not have a school email, I'm not going to go through this process. But on this Upgrade Education page, if you've scrolled down the bottom, there's some resources down here that would be helpful, specifically the Digo and Education video. If you click here, they have a number of different videos that they've included that will show you different ways that you can use Digo for educational purposes for teaching and learning. Also, on the home page at Digo.com, there's a great video that explains what Digo does. It's primarily a social bookmarking tool, but it allows you to highlight, add sticky notes, annotate, which are some things some other social bookmarking tools do not allow you to do. So once you've set up your account, and if you've upgraded to the education version, the next thing you want to do is join the EdTech group. So I'm going to paste in the URL right here. If you go to this URL, you have the option to apply to join this group. And here you can basically set up your settings of do you want to get updates immediately, daily, weekly, etc. For this course, you might find that immediately is overwhelming, but daily or weekly are probably two good options. It just depends on how often you check your email and what makes sense. I'm going to hit finish. So now the way that Digo works is if you go to a website that you find interesting, so let's say I go to the tech website and I want to add this. Over here, if I click on Digolet, you'll see that it brings down this basic thing that allows me to highlight certain things. I can add sticky notes. But right now, I'm just going to focus on basic bookmarking. And so the idea with social bookmarking is it allows you to add your bookmarks in Digo and then it syncs with any web browser that you've set up with Digo as well. So you don't have to worry about your bookmarks only being on your desktop at home. This is a way to sync them all. But it's also a way to share with other people. So I can add a note here. And I can, if I want to mark it as unread, so it's something I want to come back to read. If I want to keep it private, I can always do that. For instance, maybe you're bookmarking stuff for a medical condition you have. You don't want other people to see it. That's something you could do with the private. But then the other thing is with tags. And so I always first look at the tags that they recommend, and I choose the ones that make sense. And then sometimes I'll choose additional ones. So maybe for the course you're taking, or for another, you want to type in the number. And I hit Save Bookmark. I can also choose to highlight. And so I can highlight certain things. The last thing I could do is add a sticky note. And then I'm going to show you. I can add a sticky note post and so just like that and so now if I go back to Digo in my library you can see that I have one link you can see the tags you can see the description I gave and some other information once you start having a lot of tags you can just start searching by tags so maybe you can't remember exactly what you're looking for um, other cases you might know you're looking for stuff with EdTech 506 and it'll allow you to search that way so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to log in in a different browser with another account I have. And so, rather than the Sally Sue that I just created, so in this case, if I come to here and I look at my library, you can start seeing different things that I've added. And one of the great things, too, about this is you can build networks by following other people and they can follow you back. You can also search through other people. So this is uh, Jason's a colleague at another university that we have similar interests, so we follow each other. And so Digo allows you to do a lot of great ways of just keeping organized and keeping those resources together in one place. And then you can later just start searching through. So for instance, Twitter. I have 137 resources. So I can start looking through these. And so that's kind of the gist of Digo.
A day or two after sending your request to join the EdTech group in Deku, you will get an email like this, and it basically says that your, um, your request to join the group has been approved. And once it's been approved, when you're in Deku, you'll look under My Groups, and you'll see the EdTech at Boise State group. And so you can click on here and start seeing the resources that your colleagues are sharing. If you want to spend some time watching the video, learning a little more about Digo, throughout this semester you'll quickly start seeing the benefits of Digo.